Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here's a man after my own heart. <laughs> and, and he's a winemaker to boot. Love this. This from the Associated Press. At 57, winemaker Bill Gulvin has never been married and has no such plans in the works. He's not a mama's boy or a playboy. Instead, the Columbia, Pennsylvania resident calls himself a realist for remaining single. Gulvin says there aren't many really compelling reasons to get married anymore. Yeah, baby. Right, Bill. Says here, while single women have seemingly banded together to change their image in the popular culture, there's been no such battle cry for men who have a whole different set of stereotypes to fight. Unmarried men are called confirmed bachelors or James Bond, Bond, James Bond style playboys or cranky old men or gay. None of this is helped by the fact that married men live longer or by the common notion, common notion, that men need a woman's touch to perform household tasks like cooking, decorating, or doing their laundry. But... Some proud single men say they're better off alone. Now, keep in mind, this guy does not live in our listing area. Maybe he's heard our show online. I don't know, but he came to some of the same conclusions I have. Listen to this. This is Bill Galvin, the winemaker, age 57, Columbia, Pennsylvania. He said, a man is a sperm bank, a meal ticket, a handyman, and an early retirement plan. He says, for those reasons and others, he has decided to go through life without committing to one romantic relationship. Says here, both men and women are staying single longer as the median marriage age rises. In 2006, 33% of men in their early 30s had never been married, compared to 29% of women is according to the U.S. Census figures. Experts say society still favors married men over their single counterparts, however. The most common complaints come from the workplace, where many say they are discriminated against. Sherry Langbert, founder of a new website, which I'm not going to promote, which she calls an online community for happy singles, says... Especially as you approach your mid-30s and 40s, and all your colleagues around you are married, there's a lot of unsaid words that go on and feelings of inadequacy at work. Can I tell you something? Why would I feel inadequate at work? I make big money. Here I am in the radio business with huge ratings in the biggest revenue radio market in the world. Why would I feel inadequate? I'm a big goddamn star. Make a lot of money. Why would I feel inadequate? Are you kidding me? And I'm unmarried. So that cash ole is not going to buy Hello Kitty purses. It's not going to buy dog carriers. It's not going to buy little kitty cats. It's not going to buy tchotchkes that will be forgotten in a week or so. Just took my money and spent it on a big new house. That's the money I saved by not having some chick in my way. says here the speculation in the office about unmarried guys includes what his sexual preferences are and
and they claim here a difficulty in making friends with heterosexual co-workers because colleagues might question his motives. Gary, did you ever think I was gay when I <laughs> invited you over to watch the ball game? Did you think I wanted gay sex? Art, did you think I was going to grab your ass when you came over to my house? Come on. I didn't even ask if you were hoping for that. I'm just saying, were you expecting that? Where, where is all of this going on? On what planet? Hey, guys, big game this Sunday. Want to come over? What are you, gay? You're not married. Where's the little lady? <laughs> the woman who owns this website is clearly delusional, in my opinion. Says here, single men often say they're asked to work on holidays. That's true. Put in longer hours or travel more for business. By the way, boys, here's all you have to say. No. How about it? Have a little spine. Have a little backbone. See, it's when you have no spine that I think you're gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But simply being unmarried doesn't make me think you're gay. Says here, employers often assume that without a spouse, unwed workers have extra time to spare, says Nikki Grist, executive director of the Alternatives to Magic Marriage Project. Alternatives to Magic. Yeah. The Alternatives to Marriage Project. Nikki Grist says that organization is for people who choose not to marry or cannot legally marry. All right. I guess that means they've got gay members. Can I say gay and members in the same? I'm just curious. I don't want to get in trouble. It says here, particularly in the powerful worlds of business and politics, it's often all about appearances and presenting oneself as a stable man with a solid foundation, Grist said. Part of that expectation probably still stems from the idea that in order to completely fulfill your role as a leader in this business or policy setting, you need the support of a family and, most often, a wife. Can I just say this? I, I think this is very dated information. I have told you, and I will point it out again, people talk about settling down. Don't you need to settle down? You need to settle down. How settled down can I be? I own two homes, maintain both of them. I'm financially responsible. I've got a FICO score of over 800. I show up to work on time every day. doesn't matter who I'm banging. I still show up for work on time every day. Get the job done. Hit it out of the park every day. Because I'm unmarried, somehow I'm going to be less responsible or less likely to come in and work hard. I'll be uh, you know, somehow volatile or dangerous or not reliable. I don't get it. You know, you can hire out for all of that. You know, when I, I'll have a party, I don't need a wife. I'll hire a party planner. If I have a real party like Memorial Day, I'm going to have a party at the new spread up north. I don't even live up north, okay? I own a house there, and I'm there occasionally, starting effective almost immediately. If I'm going to have a party, I'm going to hire a party planner. Give that person the key to my house. And when I get there, it will be all set up for a Memorial Day party. I will pay them a fee. And it will probably be a substantial fee. Maybe it will be $500. Compare that to the cost of having a bitch. Someone who's every bill you have to pay. That $500 is nothing compared to having to buy handbags, shoes, dresses, skirts, underwear, bras, pantyhose, 
tchotchkes, jewelry, making payments on her car, her student loan, her visa bill. $500 is nothing. And don't these idiots at the office understand that somebody like me could go out and hire for help? I could hire out for help. I hire party planners, housekeepers, bartenders to work parties. Absolutely. If I need help packing, I get help packing. If I'm going to travel someplace, I take my laundry to the dry cleaners a lot cheaper than paying for a wife or a girlfriend. Why would anyone assume that I am not somehow stable and responsible and settled down? This is stupid. Says here, of course, not all unattached men want to stay that way. The popular online dating site eHarmony says it had trouble attracting men when it first launched in 2000. Well, you know why that is? Because these are women who aren't going give to give it up. I don't want 29 dimensions of compatibility. I want one dimension of underwear, and I want to pull it off. That's it. No wonder guys didn't want to sign up. By the way, if you've ever looked at eHarmony or gotten a clue from the commercials, where those are probably the most attractive women on the website, there's more than a hint of chunk on the eHarmony website. Because these are women who listen to Christian talk radio where eHarmony runs infomercials. And that Dr. Neil Clark Warren who does the commercials, that guy's a minister. E-harmony is like quasi-religious. If you don't believe in God, you can't get on there. If you want to get laid, you can't get on there. <laughs> oh, they can't get men to sign up. I'm shocked. That was in the beginning, anyway. They claim that's changing now. Somebody named J. Galen Buckwalter. What is he, an elder in the church? Well, he's the vice president of research and development for eHarmony.com. He says, it seems like there's been a real social shift among men, but being committed does seem to be cool these days. What would eHarmony.com know about what's cool these days? Yeah, you know what's really cool? Monogamy. It's so hip to be monogamous these days. It's the in thing among the young folks. Yes, and chastity, too. Very cool. This guy claims that there's growing emphasis in our culture on the value of fatherhood and long-term relationships. Well, eHarmony better hope so, or they're going out of business. Says here in the article, but coupledom isn't for everybody. Remember the guy we were talking about, the winemaker, Bill Galvin? He says he goes out with women. He has many friends. He has a job he enjoys and a loyal cat. Well, now I think he is gay. A loyal cat waiting for him at home at the end of the day. He says he has no interest in having children and doesn't want to fall in love. He says, I don't like the feeling. I find it to be pretty neurotic and dysfunctional. All you have to do is listen to country western love songs if you want to hear about dysfunctional codependent love relationships. Now, except for the cat part, you got to admit this guy makes a lot of sense, right? Tom like it. Dumb like us. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Dumb like us. I would rather lose a testicle than miss your show. Why, thank you for that. It's the Tom Like Show.